Hi guys, it's Norman Sutherland from Harrogate Lifestyle. Welcome back to the channel. It's been a few weeks since we last did a video and that's primarily because my van, my T5 camper conversion, is still in the paint shop. But what we've been doing over the last few weeks while the van has, has been out of commission effectively is we've been starting work on the interior in the workshop. And what I've done over the last wee while is we've completely built and laid out all of our internal units in the workshop. And I'm fortunate to have the space to be able to do that in order to test everything and also pre-fit the electrics. So welcome to part one of my camper van interior conversion without a camper van. From my previous videos, you'll know that we've elected to go for a rear U-shape uh, conversion. And if you have a look at my previous videos, you'll understand our reason for that. And here it is laid out in the workshop with lots and lots of other bits and pieces of camper van hanging all around that have either been refurbished or are about to re be refurbished prior to installation. <laughs> There's also some evidence of some other previous video projects there, including my model of the Discovery and even some uh, rockets from my uh, rocket firing Aston Martin if you want to check out those videos. The great thing about having the space to lay out and basically build the conversion dry in the workshop has been the opportunity, not sure to make sure everything fits and to be able to do it nice and comfortably in the, in the warmth of, of my workshop, but it's also allowed us to test everything, how it goes together, and to pre-install an awful lot of the electrics and bits and pieces so that when we get the van back, it should be a simple bolt and connect job. It's also allowed us to test the detail of our conversion plans. And what I mean by that is, because this has been laid out for a wee while, we've actually been living with it, and we've been coming in, and we've been sitting down, and we've almost been pretending we've been away camping, just to see how everything works, and where we need switches, and lights, and connections, and different bits and pieces, and it's worked really well. And one of the practical things this testing has confirmed is that this U-shape conversion is, is exactly what we want. We like that kind of sociable seating area at the back. We can both sit in it. We can both lay out flat. Obviously, we haven't got the cushions down just now. And we also have our two single captain seats at the front that will be able to spin around and create an even larger lounge area. But it's not without its limitations, and our testing has confirmed that. And one of the first things that we identified is a very practical issue, which is very limited space for switches, sockets, and various different pieces to, to, to attach things. And what that's meant is we've had to be very careful with the installation. But it's also allowed us to develop the electrical installation such that all of our electrics are all going to be concentrated in this single central unit, which includes the cooker, the hob, and all of the plumbing and all of the electrics and the fridge. So all of our electrics are gonna be contained here, 12 volt and 240 volt. And what that will mean is that all of the rest of the equipment in the back will be easily removed and there won't be any electrics or anything to detach in that, just the means that we're gonna fix it to the interior of the van with. And what that should mean is that we've actually got a very usable van for van purposes. And that's required a bit of careful planning. So I've come around to the back of the central unit now, and it's a bit of a mess here still, but it'll give you an idea of what we've been doing. Remember also that our van is a twin slider. So essentially, what I'm looking at just now will be exposed when the driver's side door is opened. So the driver's side door will effectively act purely as a service door. We've got our water supply under the sink. At the moment, I've also got the battery under the sink. I've still got to finalize the installation of that and obviously the exposed wiring from the fridge. My intention at the moment in terms of drainage is to use another large canister, probably like that with a tap on the end of it so that under normal circumstances, the water can run into the reservoir and then emptying the reservoir is simply a case of opening the, the tap at the back. And if we're, if we're in an area where it's okay for free drainage and it's clean water, then we can just have the tap open and this will effectively just be a reservoir that our waste water runs through. So one of the reasons that the cabling here is still a little bit untidy is because I want to finalise the length of the cables when this unit's actually installed in the van, i.e. the main cables, so that we can attach them to the main bodywork and the battery and also obviously the split charger system, which is still to be attached at the front there, um, when we know the exact lengths required. Also, same issue with the drainage. So that's why that's still over length at this time. Let's take a 
look what's in behind these protective panels. Behind that first access panel are just the cables as they run from the switch units, keeping them well clear of the gas hob at the front. I've also built a stainless steel covered heat shield to ensure that the lower part of this cupboard at the front is protected from the gas hob above and also to ensure that the electrics in the side there, as they relate to those switches, are also protected. And that and the final installation will be boxed in, so it will effectively be sealed from the rest of this unit. And in this area here, I've created, or it's work in progress, a drawer that slides in there that will give us really useful additional storage space. Removing the second access panel reveals the balance of the electrical installation. As you can see, it's uh, compact and bijou. So very simply, we've got our 12 volt electrics here. We've got our main electrical battery connection immediately below it. So those runs are short. Running through the other bits and pieces in turn, that's our split charging system. Our obviously our 240 volt electrical system. Our battery protector so that our battery doesn't drop below whatever voltage we we've, we've set that to a single socket running off the uh, 240 volt system with a ctec battery charger plugged into it that's going to be charging our battery whenever we're on shore power the shore power connection at the moment is just mocked up and you can see it and that's what's running into at the moment just a plug into a socket on the roof of the workshop the other great thing with this, as I say, is the electrical installation is all in the same place. So our 240 volt sockets are on the end of this unit. When we come round and have a look at the front of that unit, you can see again that all of the electrical installation, including those sockets, has been ducted in. So it's nowhere near any of the water or the gas. And you can also see what I've done in here in terms of the water which is just to put a large hole in there so that we can access and change the, the fresh water tank very easily and also the drain hole. Now, something else that we've done, and I'm really happy with this so far, is my intention are to use cartridges for my gas supply. I've seen it done in other videos, and the great thing with them is they're much smaller, they're much more compact. You can take three or four of them with you. And all the time that I've been running the gas cooker in the garage since we've built this installation dry, we're still on the original gas cartridge. Now in installation, my intention is for that to be secured. And you can see I've actually put holes in there that the canister fits in very neatly. I think we probably will have to put some kind of drain hole in the, in the bottom, but it's a much neater, much safer installation. And my intention is not to travel with the gas ever connected and of course we will have gas meters and we will have carbon monoxide meters in the van but it makes for a much much neater installation and it just reflects the fact that we don't have an awful lot of readily accessible space in the u-shape conversion and that issue of usable space is really important in a u-shape conversion because whilst there's lots and lots of storage space under the seats including this really big lift up here at the back where we're currently locating the toilet, which can slide out into the main cabin for overnight use. Accessible space, and by accessible space, I mean space that you can get to when the bed is down, is very limited. The bed on the U-shaped conversion is so easy to operate. You just lift it up, swing it over, the leg falls down, and you've got an almost full-size bed. But when the bed's deployed, you can't access that main cupboard. The only access you've got in terms of accessible spaces are this area here at the front, which on these units didn't come with anything in it, but it's exactly why I've made this drawer. Because in this drawer, we're gonna have everything we need to make tea and coffee. So there'll be a couple of mugs in here and all of our tea, tea coffee, and all of our cutlery and different bits and pieces. So whoever gets up in the morning, will have everything they need to make a cup of tea or coffee before we make the bed up. The other accessible space we've got in this drawer is in this drawer here, which pulls out, and there's lots of good usable space in there. Now, I've actually done some modifications to this drawer, and I'll show you some photographs of that in a second or two, to make it even more usable. But we've actually sourced a plastic tray that fits exactly in the hole that we've created here, which will allow us to store in different segments all of our plates and various different bits and pieces, and also any food and things that we want ready access to. Bacon rolls for the morning, that kind of thing. 
So as you can see, we've opened up the side of the tray so it's more readily accessible from inside the van, and we've also put some lightning holes in it. The furniture is great, but it's really quite heavy, so we've put in quite a few lightning holes. And I think that's one of the really interesting things in our mock-up and our working through that we've identified. That you really need to plan exactly what it is you require and where you're going to store that. And we actually, my wife and I sat down and we went through and we identified everything that we're likely to carry in the van. And you can see we've, we've run through the gin and tonic, that wasn't me. Uh, but we've also identified exactly where we want to put it based on how accessible it needs to be. And my intention is to create bespoke storage for everything so that when we drive off in the van, nothing rattles or moves. Everything's in a nice, secure pocket. So it takes a little bit of careful planning, but um, it's really been a worthwhile process to mock the whole thing up, to test it, to play about with it. We've been making cups of tea and coffee and everything, and hopefully as a result of that, we're going to end up with exactly the van that we want. Guys, thanks so much for listening. We very much value your comments and your observations. And if you're enjoying what we're doing, it would be fantastic if you take the time to like the channel and maybe even follow us. Be careful and stay safe out there.